Okay, let's start off with a nice opening shot of the trash right there. You like the plastic bag on the side of the road? Uh, hello, good morning. You're watching Crime Pays a Bonnie Doesn't. Okay, I still got videos of South Africa I got to put together, but I figured I'd take a little break right now because we got something especially nice. Come on, say this, say nice going on here in South Texas today in beautiful Star County, Texas. Okay, we got a pretty rare plant. It's a showing its face. It's a perennial plant, an herbaceous perennial, meaning it's got the above ground part uh, is a, uh, it only lasts for a certain portion of the year and then it dies back down. Uh, to the root to the rhizome to the tuber uh, so it, it essentially goes dormant for a while it's adapted to this extremely hot uh, and often dry climate of which we're like right on the hundredth meridian as you go west from the hundredth meridian in north america the climate uh, becomes increasingly drier increasingly more arid and uh, you can see that uh, in the plant life this plant uh, has experienced a, a drastic drop in its population due to human impact due to land clearance, and due to invasive species. Jesus Christ, I almost lost it. This is so hard to find. Anyway, this particular population of this rare milkweed, this increasingly rare milkweed, was originally discovered, I believe, by a guy named Mark Fishbein, who's at Oklahoma State. A really nice guy, friend of mine, actually, who studies milkweeds. Uh, was discovered 15 years ago. And being uh, that this, this plant can disappear, for uh, you know, long periods of time, a year, two, three years, and not emerge, uh, you know, just basically waiting for a rain. You know, I've come to this particular location a number of times and not seen it, but here today, we had recently gotten some rain. Uh, it's only 80 degrees instead of 95, and the sun's a little bit lower in the sky, not as intense, it being December. It being, uh, you know, more conducive to this plant doing its thing, this plant is actually out. It's up above ground and it's photosynthesized and not flowering yet but anyway there you go asclepius prostrata the prostrate milkweed real banger right there you got those undulate leaf margins with the slightest hint of anthocyanin pigments producing the red on the leaf margin right there you got the, the damn opposite leaves look at it you got a fuzzy stem you got a fuzzy stem you like the fuzzy stem you prick another adaptation to that uh, aridity that that dry climate and uh Again, just growing on that growing on the particular habitat type that it loves so much, always growing on sand. There's one plant, there's another one over there. All right. And they get a lot bigger than this. They can get bigger than this, maybe three times the size, but uh looks like these are just getting going. And then of course down in the ground, down maybe, you know, I don't know, eight inches down there, four inches down there, there's a tuber. There's a tuber that's storage tuber where it stores all its juice so it can emerge later on and start doing its thing again. Look at this guy coming up at beneath the Circidium Texanum. You got another one of those damn milkweeds. Look at that beautiful bastard. Not flowering yet. May not flower this year at all. Might just be cooking up carbs, storing it in that, that tuber, and then going dormant for a while. You know, maybe not being seen for, for God knows how long. But look at this, Circidium Texanum. You got the, the photosynthetic stems, Fabaceae, the pea family, the Sacealpinoid subfamily. So it's got these little... Uh, yellow almost radially symmetrical flowers with the uh with the yellow petals and what this shit tiny flowers too but see it could also produce the leaves if it needs to it could do the leaves but then it could drop that and say you know what fuck it got a little rough outside i'm just gonna i'm just gonna cook up some uh some carbs with my stems right there see that it's a that's a huge adaptive trait okay in terms of the evolution of uh many of these desert legumes that can do that you know you got the palo verde that can do that too. Look at that damn wavy, that undulate leaf margin. And look how red it is like that. Look at it, look at the texture of the leaf too. Gotta get your macro shots, get your money shots, break your hand lens out. Don't be an ignorant jag, take a closer look. Fucking banger plant right here. And again, the biggest population of it keeps repeatedly getting cleared by a, a well-intentioned, albeit somewhat oblivious, uh, road grader you know they go and they, they grade this road which is fine i've never had trouble driving down it you shouldn't be driving down that road in a fucking sedan anyway you know you need the high clearance or whatnot and it's mostly just border patrol and ranchers going down it you know i don't think there's like a you know a single mother of four driving a fucking celica down there i don't know why they got to keep grading the road but you know you give a man a machine and you tell him go do this give him a mower give him a road grader he's going to take that opportunity to uh go drive the vroom vroom around with the shit you know anyway let's keep going Oh, I got the floral scent on my nose. Floral scent on the air current. Something's flowering. 
Smells pretty good, huh? Like somebody powdered their ass, maybe. Look, who's that guy? You got one of the swallowtails, all right? It looks like he's on a, looks like he might be on a blade of grass, but that's actually a species of Aristolochia, one of the native Aristolochias, one of the, the, uh, the native uh, Dutchman's pipe. Look at all those little protuberant, protuberances on this guy, all right? You're doing a good job. You're bioaccumulating the toxins, the latent toxins in that foliage so that if a bird eats you or something, it'll retch. Good defense mechanism. Oh, yeah, there you go. So that plant he's gnawing on is probably Aristolochia erecta. How do I know that? Well, I've seen it before for one, and uh, for two, it's, uh, you know, it's the obligate host of uh, the caterpillars of this swallowtail butterfly. He'll morph into a beautiful blue butterfly when his ass is done. You know, he goes through the whole, uh, the metamorphosis thing. What do you call that thing? I don't know. I'm not a fucking entomologist. Maybe someone can put it in the comments there or whatever. But he'll do his little, uh, you know, put his little cocoon out there and then it'll emerge later on as a uh, pretty uh, gorgeous butterfly. But look at that. It just looks like uh, that Aristolochia. It just looks like, uh, you know, really easy to miss. It looks like you get another one coming out from its uh, perennial root down there but when those things flower holy shit banger flowers too gets like that tall really weird flower structure too they're uh kind of uh somewhat closely related to the more basal flowering plants the more early branching flowering uh plants evolutionarily quite old lineage uh you know it's a fucking nuanced conversation itself but you get what i'm saying anyway there you go look at this little orange fuzzy dots you like those huh you see, you see the habitat right now is not conducive to walking, all right? Pretty though, you got the leucophyllum frutescens, you got the fucking nice member of the scrofularia, you got the aloysia verbenaceae right there, look at those flower spikes with the tiny pink flowers. Oh yeah, look at all the hairs on a calyx. Look at that, bilaterally symmetrical. If you're a fly, don't you want to stick your little proboscis down in there? Get, uh, get some nectar maybe? Come into contact with some of that pollen. Okay, tear your pants, tear your pants, tear your flesh, get all fucked up. Gotta put on some, uh, some chaps, maybe? Fuck. Oh. Oh, God. We got the Vicellia rigidula, nice. Another one of the mean legumes of this area. But look at this, you got this hibiscus, too. Hibiscus marcianus coming up right there. Yeah, things are going off, man. They must have gotten some decent rain out here. I'm liking this. Look at the epicalyx. You see the epicalyx, those bracts that subtend the actual calyx? You got the uh, epicalyx, the calyx, and then the flower. See that? Epicalyx, calyx, then flower. You got, see, you got two rows of bracts. And look at that. That five, five uh, branched style right there. Nice. The, uh, you can call it an androphore. You got all those uh, all those yellow anthers and their filaments. All the stamens fused to a central column that's hollow inside. Then you got that five-branched style and stigma poking out. Five stigmas, five style branches poking out. Of that. Not not fused to that. Okay, not adenate to that uh, column that all those uh, stamens are uh, coming off of, but just coming up in between it. And you got a big, big five-petaled uh, red flag. Get the palmate leaves. This is a fucking great plant. They should be planting this up more in uh you know in the in the uh, region besides all the crepe myrtles and the like goostrum and whatever the other shit there, uh, you know. Maybe 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 I'll collect some seed. Looks like these guys are just finishing up. So you just gotta we're gonna just get down on our hands and knees and crawl through this stuff. Ah fuck. It gets a little hairy sometimes, you know, in a thorn scrub. Still nice though. Do you like it when it's nice? Ah! What do we got here? We got some open habitat. We got the sand. It's looking nice. Oh yeah, look at look at a miskeep. Look at a prosopis losing its juice right there. Ooh, ooh, it's hardened. You can't even you couldn't ply that off if you wanted to. You couldn't stick your finger in it if you wanted to. It's get the texture of plastic right now. Look at that. Get the pale of foxia. Look at this bastard. Look at those individual florets. How many? Just poking out of that. Uh, oh, you got a guy up on there. See that? 
narrow at the base and they open up those five corolla lobes you got about what 30 40 of them poking out of this uh involucre right there out of this flower head you got those that the uh, bifid style poking out of the corolla too look at the anther tubes on there brown who doesn't love a pile of foxia? Oh yeah, here we go driving down a road, and we see this. You can see you see how much they love grading here. Just keep carving out the road. That used to be road level. Uh, also got this uh, precariously perched Escobaria emscoteriana. Spit that out. Just know it's an Escobaria. You see these species names? It'll fuck you up sometimes. Don't worry about it. Just get the genus down, and make sure you you know take a picture and lag it. Look at this. Look at the uh, kind of orangish pigmentation to those spines too. And you got, you got the whole the whole plank, it's kind of a blue color to that stem. This thing's about to fall off, too. These form a little clump. Ooh, ooh. You got the tubercles in there nice beneath that uh, cavalcade of spines. Oh, yeah, there we go. So now we got we got quite a few going off there. There's one. We're on the, uh, growing right on the road. The road that's been unnecessarily graded about 9,000 times. Two. And you got another one just emerging right there from that underground tube. You can see that uh, kind of purple and the, those anthocyanin pigments flushing in them a little bit. But, of course, these are growing in the shade. Oh, you got one back there, too. Look at that. You got, like, four plants. Four. Oh, my God. There's another one, too. Five. Five uh, prostratas growing. And then, then there's another one right there looking healthy as hell. Just getting the dappled, the dappled light. Oh yeah, the sun is on 85 degrees. 85 degrees in September. You like that? Look at the buffalo grass. Bro, ooh, I got a whiff of creosote off that uh, telephone pole. That's nice. Kind of makes me sentimental, huh? Makes me sentimental for, sentimental for the railroad a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. See that just coming up amongst all the buffalo grass. All this shit. Got to cut that shit away. You can see how that shit just overtakes it though. Just outcompetes it, steals its moisture, and it shades it out. But it's just hanging on right there. You know, and who knows how long uh, since the last time it was above ground. You know, they go dormant for a year or two. Apparently they got good enough rain recently, though. Is it going to flower this year? Maybe not. Just uh, just cooking up carbs. The storing at the underground tuber. Look at that. It's our old friend Potaxis Pistolaris. Huh? Looking like a, a little shriveled brown desiccated dong just poking out of the sand. One of the only uh, mushrooms you might see in deserts. Look at all the spores coming out of it. Nice. Oh, yeah. Do a line of that. Oh. oh, yeah. There we go. There's another one just coming up right in the middle of the road. Right where there was uh, some water accumulating, as you could tell from uh, these uh, little mud flakes. It's a goddamn big prostrata. It's doing pretty good. Every time, you know, it's a, it feels like a... You know, apocalyptic story with this plant. You see it get wiped out, you know, during the frivolous road grading. You see it get, uh, you know, I still have, I've still never seen one in flower. Just not been here at the right time of year. But then, of course, you know, they're just hiding. They're just hiding. So maybe it'll be okay, you know, unless they fucking pave this road. That could really, <laughs> that could really ruin everything. But you could see it's thriving in the road because it can't compete with that invasive buffalo grass. So there's kind of a, uh, you know, it, it, it's getting along in the only place it can get along, which is right here in the dam, uh, right here in, a, in the uh, roadbed. You see that? There's that undulate margin with that little uh, red, red tint to those uh, undulate, uh, undulating uh, leaf edges. Look at that. Good day for the ice and hardy too, right? Full bloom. And then uh, even more exciting, look at that, you got a massive population of this damn milkweed. That is damn rare ass milkweed, the Asclepius prostrata. Look at that. Look how many plants you got here, how many individuals? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight just here. Eight just here. And then finally, we got the, oh, we got a nice money shot. We got a nice money shot of one blooming. First time I've ever personally seen this bastard in bloom. Look at those flowers. Look at those coronas. 
You got the five hoods, you got the five horns. Holy shit. You gotta take a wasp to get in there and pollinate that thing. Look at it. This this bastard is just trying to steal from those uh Looks like looks like uh you had some sort of rabbit gnaw on that thing, take that uh that flower apart. Holy shit. What a banger. Look at it. So here they're coming up. They're not even in the road. They're just coming up just in clearings in this sand. There's another little one. Kind of looks like the habitat we were just in, crawling around in the bushes and what the shit, but they weren't there. You know, what a what a weird plant. What an elusive little bastard. Get your thymophila. Oh, that's nice. Who's this? Hey, let's get up close, get a nice money shot. Look at those, those petals down there at the base. Petals peeled back, revealing the corona. There we go. There's a nice money shot of those flowers. Get up there. Look at the stigmatic slit. See those knobs, those, those white knobs. In between those white knobs, you got that little slit. That's where the uh, that's where the pollinarium is, where the pollinia come out of. Looking like a little boomerang with the apex of the boomerang at the top of that little slit. Takes a takes a rather large insect to pollinate these. My vote is for uh, my vote is for a tarantula hawk. You know those those fucking like kind of iridescent blue wasps. Ooh, don't want to get stung by one, but they are they are rather a uh, enigmatic and beautiful insect. Look at it, and then of course those little those little things coming out of those five hoods are the quote unquote horns. Rough breakdown of Asclepius flower morphology. You get your five hoods, your five horns, your gynostegium, your corona. The gynostegium is just that entire little, uh, it's, it's what's at the center. It's that column that's in the center right there of, uh, all those, uh, all those hoods. And then of course the fruit, when we're talking milkweed fruit, we're talking a follicle. Looks like a little pod that opens along a single seam. Oh yeah. They smell pretty nice too. Milkweed flowers are like a nectar buffet. Look at that, someone chewed on that one. Bet it was a damn rabbit. What the shit is that guy doing? It smells so pleasant. And of course, they can put all that sugar out there without worrying about, you know, it being too much of an energy expenditure because they got that tuber in the ground. They got that, that little storage mechanism in the ground. So like this guy may not even flower. He's just gonna he's just gonna do some photosynthesizing, cook up some carbs, put them back into that little tuber in the ground, that perennial rhizome. Then once it gets hot as hell and dry as balls again, actually that would I guess would be hot as balls and dry as you know, I can't think of something on the spot. Can't think of can't think of the perfect analogy on the spot, but you know what I'm saying. When it's time to go dormant again, these will just get all crispy and that that uh, little that little perennial rhizome will just sit tight. Waiting for the next rain. Oh uh, yeah, look into my gynostegium. Where the sepals at? Let's get to the sepals. They're underneath that skirt of petals. Nobody ever pays attention to the milkweed sepals. Because they're so easy to miss. Can you see them down there? Let's look. Oh yeah, there you go. There's some, there's some sepals. Five distinct sepals, five distinct petals. And then you got that whole corona thing going on up there. Look at how glistening the uh, lower part of that the gynostegium is. The lower part of that corona. Woo! Keep getting hints at it, the sideroxalon. Those tiny sideroxalon flowers on a, on a breeze. They smell so fragrant. The tiny flowers, the BB sized flowers, but they're incredibly fragrant. Sideroxalon celestrinum. Anyway, here's that. Another uh, Asclepius, another Asclepius prostrata. This one 
it's a little bit more exposed. That one too. So you got the just flushing those stress pigments, all those anthocyanins and what the shit. Beautiful, uh, beautiful purples, rough city purples. And again, look at those stems. You got the hairs. There's a species of, uh, I think it's Aclyxanthes. It's also got the opposite leaves. Looks remarkably like Asclepius prostrata, but it doesn't have the hairs on the stem or on the leaves. And then, of course, if you nick a leaf, it doesn't bleed that latex. It's got those cardiac glycosides that all the milkweed's got in them. Nice. There's another one right there. Another one right there. Doing good. You know, it just takes a little bit of rain. You could start popping off. Realize they're, uh, at least here, it's a relatively robust population. You can see this guy's almost goddamn coming out the roadside. How much more frivolous road grading will occur? All right, let's let's step over to Buffalo Grass here. Got to film the uh, the nice habitat destruction going on. Just more land clearance. This area is kind of getting fucked lately. They just put in a massive uh, mini mall that looks like you know ninety thousand other places in uh, the continental United States. Just as equally bleak and depressing. They got a uh, Panda Express. Does anyone actually eat there? The thought makes me nauseous. They got a Star Balls. They got a Wall Fat. They got all that shit there now. And uh, I don't know what they're going to do here. Maybe they'll build more uh, more wind turbines. Maybe they'll, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe somebody just needed a job to do. Maybe the road graders at it again. Who knows? But uh, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's somewhat depressing. A whole lot of that beautiful time of leaping thorn scrub just got cleared. And so the tumor grows. Oh, look at that guy. The glory of Texas cactus. You believe in the glory of Texas? The goddamn glory of cactus. Why is it glory? Why has it got to be Texas? Why is every, so many, <laughs> so many plants here have common names. Texans just love, they just love slapping their name on it, don't they? The glory of Texas. Look at that. Look at that flower. Oh, yeah. A fine, a fine caryophyllales-ish bastard. With the bane lane pigments. Look at that. You got look at all those stigma lobes. Look at that. Stigma lobes poking out, waiting to receive pollen. And then all those fucking anthers surrounding it. With the red filaments. Just sur completely surrounded by those pink teeples. Look at that. Seriously, that stigma lobe. It's like the plant cervix. Looks like a goddamn, like a little hand with like ten fingers on it. And then you see, you got kind of a spiral pattern too. You got kind of a spiral pattern. Oh, what's going on there? You got a, you got a peyote. A peyote, a, a lofafra. Remember the polygalacia right there, whose name I can't remember because I haven't looked at the uh, the floristic inventory of this region in about nine months. And uh, you got more peyotes right over there. More peyotes right over there. Whole shit tons of peyotes. Another peyote right there. Doing that thing they do, just blending in with the gravels. That have been deposited over the last, I don't know, 300,000 years by the uh, meandering, meandering channel of the Rio Grande. The Rio Grande. You got the Grusonias right there, the dog choyas. You know, because they get stuck in a dog's paws. Didn't even bother bringing Jack and Louie today. They would have hated it. You know, I think they're mad at me. You got your Corophanta. You know, and all just coming up in the, the uh, dappled light, the understory of uh, the thorn scrub. Which, of course, is getting cleared away at an increasing rate to make room for, uh, you know, the fucking Panda Express and the wind farms and just the general uh, tumor of modern society. Kind of a bummer. Ooh, it smells good, though, too. I can smell, you know, that's that Sideroxalon blooming again. Holy shit. Look at that. Look, it's a tiny guy. You see the little guy over there? A uh, dime-sized. Grown quite a few of these from seed. Some of mine are like, I don't know. Maybe that big right now. I, this shit needs to be fucking legalized. Quit dicking around. Legalize it so people can grow it. You get less people poaching it. And maybe every once in a while, you'll get somebody eating some, not from the wild, only cultivated, and they'll, uh, they'll learn something about themselves, you know? Get people, uh, you know, opening the doors of perception and what the shit and going, going inside, going deep. You fuck, huh? You scared? I bet plenty of people are. They, but, you know, the people who are scared of it are the people who need to do it. Anyway, there you go. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go, Grandpa. Look at this guy. This guy, last time I seen this guy, he was, like, almost flush with the ground. You could tell, you know, he's he's protruding out of the ground a little bit. It's rained here since then. Look at that little guy, too. So he's uh, he's looking pretty good, looking pretty plump. 
Look at it, you got three of these guys next to each other. You know, but I always come visit this guy anytime I'm in the area, you know? Didn't even mean to make put these guys in the video. Just figured, since I'm here, might as well get them. Say hello. You looking good, not too bad. Maybe I'll see him in six months and it has a rain or something, they'll be recessed back into that, that soil, almost completely covered by the gravels, ensconced. So, so this, this area right here, this roadbed, is the literal exact place they want to build, they were going to build that stupid fucking wall, which hopefully they're not going to do anymore. Hope it fell through, you know, like a, a shit ton of bricks, because it was a just a fucking horrible idea. You know, you get some of those blimps up there, you get some of those guys staring at the cameras and shit, lurking in their uh, vehicles. Half the time they're probably looking at porn, the other half they're looking for migrants or something. They'll do as good a job as a wall, you know, stopping people coming through. Walls probably wouldn't actually do that that much, but uh. It would just certainly destroy. It's more of a, it's more for show. Como se dice, performative. You know what I mean? Just uh, to give the illusion that something's being done. You know, to, to get all those angry geriatrics and I would have calmed out. Look at this, look at this. Uh, Eocene bivalve fossils. How about that? Oh, yeah. Quite a few of those. You know, back when this area was an ancient ocean. Remember that? Wasn't that nice? Wasn't that nice? See, there you go. Look at that. Ooh. All right, let's keep going. Come on. Ah, yeah, there we go. There's a couple. You got quite a few of that prostrate milkweed here, too. One, two, three, four. You got five. None flowering yet. Wouldn't you like to see a uh, big, dumb fence on top of it? A performative fence? To, you know, just to, something to quell your grandparents during the... the uh, waning decades of their lives when Fox News has them all hyped up and angry about shit that doesn't really matter in the end, isn't it? Uh, anyway, all right, so I'm, let's keep going, sorry. Right next to the, uh, looks like the plastic's degrading, that's nice, it's been here for a year or two. Right next to a surveyor's stick for where the border wall would go, we got one of those uh, extremely rare and endangered milkweeds, nice. Just getting going, you can see he just probably popped out of that perennial rhizome. Got the hairs and what the shit, the red margin on those uh, undulate leaf edges. Just popping out. You know, hopefully he'll get going. If it rained enough, maybe we'll get more rain. See him, you know, he'll uh, come out to here. You know, get like a good, uh, maybe a foot diameter or so. What a stupid fucking, it's just shit just infuriates me. It's so stupid. It's not going to do anything anyways. Then off there in the distance on the other side of the Rio Grande right there, you got Mexico. Oh, there's another one. They're all up. Another prostrata. What a cryptic plant. What a weird fuck, huh? Look, you got your Lipia graviolens, all right? Verbenaceae, but uh, it certainly smells like it's in the sage family. Lamiaceae, they're in the same order, at least. You got those opposite leaves. Very fragrant plant, even without the flowers. And then there's those, uh, all those five fused uh, petals with a little, little yellow uh, dimple in the middle. Just and then just coming up the whole the, the formation we're on is called the Jackson group Jackson group sandstone This is just weathered sandstone that you got the prostrata growing on Okay, only growing on the sand it only grows on sand And it seems to fucking like roadbeds, which you know someone should tell the plant That's not the best place to grow But I guess getting where you can fit in probably likes the lack of competition. You got one two three four five plants total here See that sometimes you find fossils in this stuff too Kind of nice. It's kind of hard though. But if you cracked it over someone's head, it'd probably break. Look, it's the Texas barbed ass wire pea. That's the Circidium. See that? See, I'll play by their game. I'll just put Texas in front of it. The Texas barbed ass wire pea. That's my common name I made for this. For anyone who thinks uh, Circidium has too many vowels in it. You got a fruit and a flower. A distinctly sace alpinoid, sace alpinoid flower. Look at those 10 anthers in it. Ooh. Little cupped sepals, five yellow petals, and the photosynthetic stems, nice. Okay, just didn't feel like putting its leaves out. Probably worried about losing too much uh, moisture. But you know, I'll be honest, it's, this is one of the more pleasant times I've been here. It's normally hot as balls. 
Oh, yeah, there you go. There's a nice money shot of that Cercidium. Full frontal floral glory. And you got an opposite-facing flower on the other side. You can look at those sepals. The Texas Barbed Ass Wire Pea. That's the common name. I want you to call it that, you fuck. Hmm? Tell that to your uncle. You know, who lives up there by Leno. Ooh, look at this mimosa, too. Legumes really get by in the deserts. You know, I guess if you can fix your own nitrogen with the aid of that uh, rhizobium bacteria, you're going to do all right. See, each one of those little poofs is composed of like 20, 20 flowers. See that? Each one of those little flowers has about, I don't know, I, I'm guessing it's 10 stamens. Maybe it's more, probably 10. And then right at the nodes, you got those fucking recurved thorns. You see that? You got the pinnate leaves. Actually, what is that? Bipinnate? Tripinnate? And then you got those recurved, uh, those little recurved thorns, you know. And that's a key, that's another key to pay attention to too, to figure out what genus you're looking at. Do the, those those recurved spines, thorns, whatever the fuck you want to call them, they occur at the nodes or are they internodal? If they're internodal, it might be a vichelia. If they're at the nodes, it could be a mimosa, it could be a senegalia. Again, we're still on a Jackson group, that uh, Jackson group formation, right? This whole hillside is composed of those Eocene bivalve fossils. The fossil clams, there's one of them right there. Just a, a rich layer of calcium carbonate embedded in the sandstone. Get some old bottles too, some uh, antique trash. Leucophyllum frutescens, got no puncha, got that mimosa. Oh, yeah, look Look what we got here. Look at that. That's nice. Ariagonum gregii. Somewhat rare buckwheat. All right, remember Ariagonum's got, they, they all got the flowers in it in volucre. That in volucre, like a little uh, a little vase holding all the uh, individual flowers. Look how tiny a single flower is. What, what do you got? Like barely five millimeters right there? Six tepals. Kind of odd for a dicot. Six tepals, nine stamens, and then you got that uh, little pedestal. Can you see the pedestal in there? The little, the flowering stalk. Let me funnel this thing. Yeah, see, there you go. You see the little stalk holding those uh, flowers? Such a distinct, such a distinct floral morphology. These guys aren't open yet. This one only occurs. I think, believe this is the only place in uh, the United States that occurs, right? Right on the uh, Rio Grande, right on the border. Oh, nice mammalaria, nice mam hydri. Look at the smooth bark on that Texas persimmon. Look at it, diasporos. It's smooth ass bark on those little pygmy persimmons. And this fuck is another rare plant. The uh, Zapata bladder pod. Brassicase eats some mustard, but it's not flowering. Still haven't seen this fucker flowering. But there's the old uh, inflorescences, there's the old stalks. Let's take a close up look at those. Those leaves. Oh, look at the scales. Look at the scales on those leaf rows. Those leaf rosettes. Got a nice blue color to them. Nice glaucous color. And there's that Escobaria over there. Ooh. Escobaria M. Scotteriana. Is that the one? I forget. There's so many fucking Escobars. I think I'm pretty sure that's the one. You know what? I don't even really give a shit, to be honest with you. I don't. I don't. Oh, and you got a passive flora over here. You got that passion flower. Woo! Look at that. How's it for a nice leaf shape for a, a passion fruit? Look at that. Look, the flowers coming out the leucophyllum that's growing right out the wall. You know, all the hissed flowers, the hissed crawlers, just looking like a, someone had a damn ticker tape parade. All right, like there's confetti all over the ground. Texas sage, though. It's, of course, not a sage at all. Same order, but this is in a, one of the few members of the family Scrofulariaceae that occurs in North America. The rest recently got thrown in Plantagenesi. Oh, look at that. Look. It's an oxalis. Fucking weird for an oxalis, huh? Look at those little uh, hairy like uh, stipules right there. Those little, uh, look, look how woolly the whole goddamn thing is. Oxalis dichondrifolia. You know, you see the flower looks like a yellow oxalis flower. The leaves don't look like oxalis though. Fucking weirdo. You got a little fern. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got a night bloomer. A Pasinaceae, Mandevilla. Mandevilla lanuginosa. 
a pasinaceous flower. See that? Make a little, uh, make a little funnel. Those five, five white fused petals. It smells fucking incredible in there too. Same family as the deniums. And there's that calyx down there. Opposite leaves, leaves opposite each other. Flip them over. You got some indumentum on there. You got the hairs and what the shit. Look at that. See that? Undulate leaf margins again, which I think has got to be an adaptation to exposure or aridity. But flowers post mature. Almost looks like someone took a shit, wiped their ass, and threw the teepee on the uh, bush right there. Still smells pretty good though. Pollinated by moths at night. Oh yeah, there's that Aclysanthes bougainvillea family. Nictaginaceae. Look at the damn. Look at the damn uh, filaments and uh, anthers. Whole stamens, bright pink, white flower, opposite leaves, little spade-shaped leaves. Just coming up, a little vine climbing the, uh, whatever it is, dead bushes, I can't even tell. All right, all right, well that's all I got. I, don't, I wasn't even trying to do a video today. I wasn't even trying to make a fucking video. Just came out here. Seeing the prostrata was blooming. We'll end it with a nice shot of Mexico, huh? Down there on the Rio Grande, the Rio Grande. Got your Hotrofa Diawica looking like little brown straws. Look, they got leaves on them. You never see them with leaves on them. Must have got some good rain here. You know, the kind of rain that makes the sleepiest prostrata come out. And once it comes out, you never know where you're gonna find it. It just pops up anywhere. Found some right off Highway 83 growing near a Thymophila tephraluca. The one spot you could see Thymophila tephraluca. Look at that glory of Texas cactus. Glory. The glory. What a bullshit lie. You gotta take sodium mucronatum, a Montezuma cypress growing right in a river just down there. I was up here once and seen a bunch of feral pigs banging in the, uh, forget the invasive grass species. I've been fucking out. Yeah, I was just, I was off the continent too long. I forgot a lot of the, uh, plants here but i've seen these feral pigs banging and whatever and kind of wished i had a, a pistol with me to shoot them because they just they fucking tear all this stuff up you know they're just doing their their thing i get it but uh you know you need you need a predator all the jaguars around here have been wiped out last one was killed in the 40s so you know i guess uh humans are the next best next best thing to keep them in check all right that's all i got for you today have a good rest of the evening go fuck yourself bye